Uh, this paper is a translation of the original research in Spanish, and um, my English is not very good. Sorry. First of all, uh, I would like to thank the Scientific Committee for the selection for my paper to be part to, uh, of the program of this conference. The research I present today represents one of the issues that are currently being addressed in the project Popular Music in the context of the recording studio. Spaces and agents of the uh, record production process in Spain, uh, which researches the musical contribution of Spanish producers and studies the ways in which producers, engineers, arrangers, and session musicians influence the creative process within a recording studio. This project has been uh, Sorry, this project has been awarded with a research grant from a Latin Grammy Cultural Foundation, and this research process is scheduled to end in March 2019. The results will be presented in book format, to, to, uh, book format sorry, during the second semester of 2019. So, therefore, it's, it is a work in progress. The research project is developed around three main objectives. To, history, uh, to uh, historically document Spanish recording studios as creative as spaces. The history of the Spanish recording studios, unlike other countries, had not yet addressed in any academic work. To study the work of the different professional roles linked to the spaces destined to the Spanish music production of this period. And three, to study the technical and musical processes which have allowed creating and identifying sounds linked to the different artists, creators, record labels, and genres related to the popular urban music in Spain. It is therefore a work in progress whose final results I hope to have the possibility of presenting in future conferences. As a matter of time limitation, here I will focus on the first point, that of recording studios as creative spaces and their acoustic design features. Well, a uh, brief uh, evolution of the, of the recording studios in, in Spain. Uh, the interest aroused in our country, in Spain, by the phonographic catalogs and the reproducer leads to the publishing of the bulletin phonográfico, phonographic bulletin, magazine that is published from Valencia and probably the first specialized publication in sound recording in Spain. In its issue number two, ah, sorry. sorry. So sorry. Okay, okay. The evolution of the recording studio design to the musical production in Spain does not dif uh, differ significantly from that of the studios on the Anglo-Saxon em environment. Although we must talk in some phases of our recording history about a certain technological delay conditioned by the fact that Spain has never been a producer of new technologies aimed at recording and or producing music. The market of technology oriented to the production of audio has been carried out by other countries, mainly the United States, uh, US, UK, or Germany. In this context, context and uh, only with a few exceptions, from a technological perspective, Spain has always been an important country. This fact constitutes a, deter a determining factor when analyzing the device devices with which the studios have been equipped in their different stages, always conditioned by difficulty to access certain equipment of eco for economic, sorry, political and even logistical reasons, derived from its geographical, geographical sorry, situation, which uh, would explain, for example, the greater initial presence of English recording and mixing equipment than American. In spite of this, in the case of Spanish recording studios, we can establish similar periods to English and American industry, beginning the evolution of the recording studio in the same stages. Uh, the era of acoustical electrical recording period to multitrack tape, the consolidation of the studio of musical production as another instrument, uh, as a service of creation, for example, 
a the era of, the, of independent recording studios, eh, a digital era, the last era, a stage marked by the progressive disintegration of the traditional studio. Now, yes, eh, a brief analysis of the origin of recording studios in Spain. The interests are aroused eh, in our country by the phonographic catalogs and the reproducer leads to the publishing of the Bulletin Phonographico, Phonographic Bulletin magazine that is published from, uh, from Valencia and probably the first specialized publication in self-recording in Spain. In its issue, number two, published on January 20, uh, 1900, there was an article dedicated to explain the important, uh, importance of the acoustic condition of the room in which the recording is made or the distance of the horn to the piano and the voice of the singer in order to achieve an optimal impression. It means a, a good, a optimal recording, a good recording. In the other hand, radio studios at the end of the 20s also became aware of the importance of the acoustic conditions of the room for an optimal diffusion of the music that was played in it. To give an example, in the main studio of, of Union Radio Station in Madrid, dedicated to music programs, the walls were covered by a thick tapestry in order to achieve an acoustic without an uh, uh, excessive sorry, reverberation. But since the sonority changed uh, depending on the type of musical performance, the technicians had to design systems that allowed the variation of the acoustic conditions of the studios. This factor confirms the concern for the acoustic conditions of the recording and musical diffusion room and the settings of variable acoustic depending on the characteristic of the sound sources, larger or smaller orchestras or solo instruments. Another aspect to take into account in the evolution of the recording studio in Spain and the specialized professional profiles and recording techniques is the recording of sound within the film studios from the uh, 30s. In 1935, just before the outbreak of the Civil War, there were 10 film studios in Madrid, three uh, in Spain, sorry, three in Madrid and seven in, uh, three in Barcelona, sorry, and seven in Madrid, where in addition to set attended from filming, we also find the creation of dubbing and post-production rooms, as well as soundproof vocal booths and which the dialogues and the uh, diegetic components of the films were recorded. Some of these filming studios also assumed the recording of the musical act inserted in the soundtracks, expanding and involving, as in the case of the Cinearte Studios in Madrid, towards the creation of records of rooms, sorry, of recording and production. We thought the decade of the 40s affected the evolution of the recording industry due to the difficult situation derived from the deep crisis in the first post-war years. Some labels, uh, labels, sorry, like the Spanish Columbia or Hispavox, create a business infrastructure that included the construction of studios aimed of the, of the recording of the most popular genres of the time, mainly uh, Copla, uh, Spanish genre, and uh, Zarzuela, but always following in the footsteps of, of England and the United States, the studio will now really become an instrument and at the service of production until the arrival of rock music at the beginning of the 60s. It is during this period in Spain that we have the appearance of consolidation on the one hand of the studios of Spain record companies such as Belter or Hispavox, and on the other hand, the studios that multinational company, companies link to build in Madrid and Barcelona such EMI, Philips or RCA. Well, in this study of the meaning of English sound and American sound in musical production, Zagoski Thomas justifies certain, uh, certain sorry, technical parameters characteristic of recordings in both countries from a socioeconomic context, arguing how cultural domains and social settings in the UK and the US provide the national infrastructure, infrastructures and centripetal forces Within which individuals develop their own creative practice through the centrifugal force and their own personal experience. For Zagorski Thomas, the cultural domains of the two countries consist of a physical infrastructure 
with its inherent influence and restrictions, a system of symbolic rules related to the practice of recording and incorporated into the norms of training and professional practice. But in the Spain of the early 60s, there is no such physical infrastructure capable of emulating the English sound, nor have been assimilated the rules inherent to a practice of recording different methodologically speaking to the one carried out in our recording studios until then. The Spanish recording studios will be characterized by large rooms in which the acoustic characteristics are used to provide a greater or lesser amount of reflections to the elements of the recording. In this large uh, space, uh, and without a specific acoustic treatment, we try to imitate the English sound by trying to achieve the same back line, for example, as it can be seen in the images of the recording sessions of the first album of Spanish band Los Brincos in 1964, where box amplifiers are being used. Where? But in the uh, 70s, record companies lose interest in the recording studio as part of their or the organizational chart. There is no longer a concern to control um, the process from the beginning, focusing its interest in the image of the artist and the commercialization of the product. The magazine Studio Sound published in 1979 an article signed uh, by the Spanish audio engineer Pepe Loetzes, where a review of the main Spanish recording studios is carried out. The article highlights the fact that the recording industry in Spain is located mainly in Madrid and Barcelona. The recording industry focused in the two main cities of the country for one simple reason. In these cities is where the office of the major record, the recording companies, especially the headquarters of the international labels, were placed. In analysis prior to the description of the equipment of the different recording studios, Loetzes raises what has always been one of the main difficulties when acquiring and renewing the devices that intervene in the recording process. As a country that was fundamentally an importer, the cost, increase, and difficulty to access certain devices were an added obstacle when competing with the international recording industry. Although some studios when maintaining the link with the record company and in the case of Phonograph, uh, Ispavox or RCA in Madrid or the case of EMI in Barcelona, it is already not, uh, noticeable and appearance and new recording studios arising from, from business initiatives separate from the record companies. Focusing on one of the two case studies that I will deal with below, Eurosonic Studios, uh, Spanish studios, uh, included in 1979 uh, an IF uh, 24 with a subgroup studio uh, with 24 tracks, a uh, stereo studio uh, A80, and East Lake monitoring system, two units of EMT reverberation, and one unit um, AKG reverberation, too. But the design and acoustic characteristic of the rooms which make up the recording studio insert a remarkable influence of, on the productions that are made there. Simon Fawski Thomas attributes precisely to the design and acoustic of the rooms on the characteristics to the distinguish the English sound from the American sound with the recordings of the 60s. In the acoustic design, of the recording room and the microphone techniques used during the recording process, close micing versus distant micing, can be considered as determining factors when studying the differences between the so called English sound and the American sound. They should also be decisive aspects when studying the, the Spanish production made during the same decade. A compulsory comparison could lead us to solve questions such as, such as, as sorry, uh, for example, what difference exists uh, between the acoustic designs of the English or American studios, uh, recording studios and the Spanish ones? What influence have these designs exerted on the productions of this decay? The different acoustic designs allow us, the, us to establish traditional sonic differences or local sounds ascribed to certain recording studios in the beginning, independently of the work of the engineer or producer, but is Precisely these difference, differences 
and the search of the homogeneity in the professional recording conditions that leads to the development of companies such as Westlake, which propose a treatment system based on controlled acoustic and as neutral as possible. Where, uh, sorry. Uh, Wesley Company was uh, founded in the early 70s in Los Angeles by Glenn Phonix, uh, Tom Healy and Paul Ford for the construction of loudspeakers and its main activity. But Wesley, uh, later Eastlake in Europe, would end up creating one of the first recording studio acoustic standards with the aim of providing acoustic properties practically interchangeable in different studios and approach that would become very popular at that time, at that lead, in some cases, to worldwide homogenization of the acoustic characteristic of professional recording studios. Uh, this is the case of uh, Spavos recording. Uh, this is the case of uh, Spavos, Spavos first and, and Eurosonic uh, later in, in Spanish. Uh, what is intended to be demonstrated is, in short, the aesthetic influence that the new recording studios, which emerged in the 70s, exercised in Spanish production from that moment, consolidating a change that leads to some producers like, like Alain Milo, for example, who usually recorded in London, to entrust Spanish recording studios with their new production, productions. I will exemplify this aesthetic change through, through a proposal of analysis of two productions. One from 1967, uh, made at Isfavox Studios, and another, another from 1974, made at Eurosonic Studios, both located in Madrid. Well, the first uh, case is this song. Uh, the name of the song is uh, Calla de Niña, uh, Shut Up Girl, more or less. Uh, the artist is a Spanish band, uh, band uh, Picnic uh, of uh, 1967. Uh, it's recorded in Spavox Studios in Madrid and the producer is Rafael uh, Trabuchelli. Um, well, the Spavox recording uh, room presents 200 uh, square meters. Uh, Spavox competes in dimensions with uh, that of uh, Studio One of Olympic for example, of the famous Studio 2 of Abbey Road of similar size. Uh, similar to size, no? in, in the, the acoustic treatment is not, not similar. Uh, in Barcelona, uh, for example, st Studio 2 of Kema Studios also had, at that moment, a recording room of more than 200 square meters. In short, during this period, we had recording rooms in Spain that competed inside with the English recording studios and whose site was considerably larger than that of most recording studios in the United States, a fact that shows a tendency in Spain to copy models of English music production, which is a consequence, among other things, of a geographical proximity that leads artists and producers to maintain a continuous contact with British recording studios. Remember that during this period, there are several Spanish bands being recorded in Deca Studios, for example, in London, or Lanzo Lan Studios, by Studios, etc. We must consider, without a doubt, the origin of our production practice, Spanish production practice, is this framework of professional contacts between England and Spain. In the case of Hispavox, having a large recording room, the reflections generated by the acoustic of the room are used as part of the recording adding tone color to the signal of the original source. The analyzed carryout tries to explain the reverb times provided by a large room such as the one of the Spavox studios. Despite having some acoustic treatment provided mainly by using absorbed elements, the reverb time of the room is very, very long, for example, in, in, in this song of, of Picnic. But in addition to the use of the acoustic characteristics of the recording spaces, sensors uh, or, or other resources such as the echo chambers, for example, recording studios being to the second half of the uh, 1960s, uh, of the 60s, to introduce recreational units of acoustic environments based on mechanical system, play forever, uh, uh, for example. In uh, uh, Spavox studios, as in other recording studios, the play driver device 
EMT the famous plate uh, EMT uh, one hundred and forty yeah. out of the um, the conclusions here um, to be used in pop production of the second half of the sixties the possibility of adjusting really long rubber times for up to the uh, four seconds means in the uh, in this production this experiment with the stereo with somewhat ingenuous way uh, locating to main voice in the center while the projection of the, the projection of the reverb is directed towards the right channel where listen uh, the songs the song is this this is a master track Recording studios with a with a Islay design. Um, it's a, 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 a small smaller studio with a, with other uh, acoustic characteristics uh, 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 and other uh, recording methodologies. Uh, close micing, snare more present, vocal more present. Uh, the reverb is is short. And uh, there is a, a great difference uh, between the, the productions in Spain in, in the 70s in, in the new studios with uh, this uh, uh, design, this, this studio design, and uh, the recordings of, of the decay of the 60s. Uh, listen and finish uh, another space study. This is another Spanish band. It's a recording of 1974. In Eurosonic Studios uh, with uh, uh, Islay uh, design, and uh, this is the, the song. <laughs> music directly affects to physiological and structural change of recording studios and the Islet design is a, an example of this. The design of the recording rooms built in the 70s is affected by the methodological change in the musical production processes. The reduction of the dimension of the rooms coincides with the progressive increase in the number of recording tracks and the mm, widespread use the plate-based reverb device. 
Spain, always following the evolution of the English American industry, simulates and adapts its production techniques according to its own limitation on both technical and human resources. In, his, in this sense, both the English recording and mixing devices and the acoustical designs made by, by American and English engineers represent a quality factor that is used as marketing strategy by the studios themselves. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we've got five minutes for questions. Any easy questions? <laughs> I mean, you didn't uh, get a chance to talk a lot about the West Lake and East Lake studios, but they're a bit controversial. Not all engineers like working in them, uh, but because they are kind of dry and yeah, they, yeah. You know, because of the sound, was there any controversy amongst uh, Spanish engineers, or did they like the sound of the studios? Uh, and was there any worry that maybe it was? importing a foreign style and not indigenously Spanish or something? Or what kind of debates came or discussions came with the studios? Do you no, know? No, all the Spanish engineers likes the sound of his late they like it, design. Okay. Because it, uh, it's, uh, in, in opinion of, of uh, engineers, no, no, not all, but uh, it's a, 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 a Excessive dry room, um, no no bright no bright room, and the engineers that uh, uh, works uh, in the decade of sixty in, in the great uh, recording rooms, l l I think loves this 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 sound this this great sound, and the Spains uh, the engineers uh, try to copy. To uh, the concept of, I don't know, uh, um, world of sound. It speaks about, uh, I don't know, uh, the uh, the producer that works in in Spavos Studios is a, a Spanish specter. <laughs> it's a Spanish specter because uh, because. Uh, 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 um, his methodology uh, is a record all together in a great uh, uh, room, etc. And uh, the the East Lake, the West Lake, West Lake design in the 70s is a great change for a, a methodology of recording in Spain too. And not all the engineers loves this this, this change. When was when was the Hiskolok studio built? Uh, sorry. So when was what year was the the big studio design that built? What? The the, the, the recording studio, the, the big recording studio. Ah, the name. Yeah, yeah. Hiskolok. Hiskolok. Yeah. When was it designed? Uh, the design is a empirical Spanish design. In, I don't know the name of engineer. No, but, but what, what year was it? Ah, cuando, so, yeah. In, I think uh, the, the, these pictures, these pictures, uh, the, the year is uh, 1964. Is the, the the last the the newest new studio, mm -hmm. the last mm -hmm. studio mm -hmm. of his box uh, uh, before the. Finished your uh, And was it designed for orchestral recording? Sí, si, for orchestra. Yeah. Sí, si, for orchestral for for recording. Eh, Zarzuela is the the more success genre in, in Spain. For classic. Zarzuela yeah. for classic classic. And then so it was adapted later for pop. Music. Yeah. yeah. This is the, the 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 point, the important point. Eh, the the inclusion of rock music in Spain. Eh, eh, is a, a, a very important change for, for the methodology of, of recording in these spaces and it's necessary to uh, adapt this space for, for a new music, rock music and pop music. No? Mm -hmm. 
Was it owned by a record company? Or was it an it's a Spavox, it's, it's a record company, a recording studio, it's, a, it's our version of EMI. Your EMI. Spanish EMI. <laughs> Thanks, Mark, and that was great. I've just come out of the um, session with um, uh, Lachlan Gould, who was talking about the, the changing character of the recording studio, and your paper was about standardisation. I was thinking it would have been perfect to have you two together on the same stream. Um, and then what he was saying was that um, this sort of um, evident decline in the large format recording studio and the move towards sort of smaller setups in home situations is actually a really good thing for artists and that it's it's a great thing that we're getting rid of all of this and that this net because this it was a barrier for, for so many people and i just wondered what you think about that um in terms of the sort of broader implications of the of the large format studio is well, it is it a, is the decline a good thing or a not good thing or is there still a place for this uh um in, in the, the history of, of Spanish production uh, is, is, is uh, always the, the history of, of imitation, the, the, the technical, the, the methodology of, of uh, English producer of, mm. of American producers, and um, the, the, uh, this is a, a, a problem always in, in, in Spain. Uh, I can't, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, for us, uh, the, the US recording and UK recording is the top of, of, of recordings and, and this sound is the sound that uh, I, 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 I hope, I, I, I like, uh, we like the copy and uh, the spaces uh, it's a, uh, I think it's a heritage of 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 the recording studios about other different, a lot of different uh, genres. Mm -hmm. For example, copla uh, is a flamenco. For example, no, it's, it's another atmosphere. It's a a, a great. Uh, it's the sound of, of great spaces. Is, is the, 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 the most important characteristic of flamenco, of recordings of flamenco. And for us, it's very, very difficult to adapt our mentality, our um, uh, tra tra record, tradition of recordings uh, in, in rock music that is very, very different for us. In, in, in this decade, in this decade, um, uh, really, uh, for Spanish engineers and, uh, and, and Spanish producer, it uh, was very very difficult to adapt uh, your uh, work, your methodology uh, for work in these spaces, and uh, the new spaces in the seventies uh, was a I think, in my opinion, a, a, a good change about uh, uh, a, a good level, uh, improve the level of the of the technical and well, technical and musical, musical and technical uh, level, improved level of, of Spanish production. But uh, uh, the, the most important point here is that uh, our history of record production not uh, have a, a book, a, a right, uh, it's no uh, an, an important academic uh, in, this, in this sense. And uh, I haven't, we haven't uh, pictures uh, uh, this picture is only picture of 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 this box. Wow. One picture. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a great problem for us, but it's, it's, it's my my research nowadays. <laughs> 
the University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.